Some of us are still here because we love this country so much. And we do not want the country to burn. We have always complained about the situation of things in Nigeria. We want things to be better in our own, our own lifetime. Not just for Nigerian youth, but for the police themselves. They deserve better. Why can't they uh, get, get good salary? Why can't they get good houses and cars? You understand? So they, they also deserve better. But they too need to realize that we too also deserve better. Nobody is going to be happy when you are in the um, um, or just killing people suffering them, exploiting them, oppressing them. Nobody will be happy about that. You understand? So that is why we always do this, just so that people will never forget. Thank you very much. Some of us are still here because we love this country so much. And we do not want the country to burn. We have always complained about the situation of things in Nigeria. We want things to be better in our own, our own lifetime. Not just for Nigerian youth, but for the police themselves. They deserve better. Why can't they uh, get, get good salary? All right, so the NSAS movement, which began in Nigeria in October 2020, is a defining moment in the fight for justice and accountability. This movement was a response to the long-standing issues of police brutality and abuse of power by the Special Anti-Robbery Squad in Nigeria. Now, in bid to honor the memory of those who lost their lives, um, endured injustice, and to keep the spirit of uh, reform alive, the NSAS memorial this year, led by Files and Mr. Macaroni, stands as a symbol of resilience, unity, and the ongoing struggle for a better Nigeria. So today we are asking, what is the state of the Nigerian youth three years down the NSAS movement? Now please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three four six six three. NJ Mwajaka. <laughs> Interesting day. Where were you, first of all, on this day in 2020? In 2020, I, um, unfortunately, I was actually at home. But I, I remember I was out the day before. I think we were out till about past midnight or something like that. And, but we, we obviously heard you know, of the news not to show up on Sunday. And so we stayed back at home, and we were we had the gunshots and all those things that happened that day. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was very close to the scene of. Yeah, because yeah. you your house is just right here, yeah, right there. Yeah, so it was quite. It's it, well, it's three it, three years gone, and a lot of things have happened in those three years. Like you rightfully said, fifteen of those people who were arrested, and that's just who we know. So 15 of those, some of the people who were arrested are still in jail. This is three years after. Even a criminal would have been convicted by now or should have been convicted by now. So um, there is, I don't think there's any crime they committed that day that would warrant them still being in jail for three years unless there was a conviction. So um, if you want to ask about the state of current state of things, people are still unhappy. It's still a very sad conversation. It's a conversation that you would have and every time people are bitter about it. Mm -hmm. And um, rightfully, as a Nigerian citizen, I don't think anything has changed with the police system. And I am saying this outright because I haven't seen any changes. Um, two days ago, I drove by the Lekki toll gate. And I was surprised to see, I was wondering what was happening. I actually thought um, the president was coming into town. But then I remembered, I looked at my watch and I, and I realized what day it was. So for the last uh, 24 to 48 hours, there have been over about 20 uh, bullion vans and you know, police vehicles at the toll gate. And as surprising as it is, well, as unsu is un it's not surprising like that, yeah? And, but you understand what I mean. It's surprising that we still go through the same thing every year. So this is what worries me. So um, two, 24 hours before, or 48 hours before, we're able to push out that much security at the Lekki toll gate just for fear of what would happen. And what is the worst that can happen at the toll gate is that protesters would come and work around the toll gates, you know, to show in remembrance of the people who were lost and in remembrance of the people who fought for for a cause 
and in remembrance of people who were shot dead, and in remembrance of people who were injured, and in remembrance of people who have had to leave the country based on that situation. So I don't think there's anything wrong with a peaceful protest. But the fact that the Nigerian police will see the need, I understand the situation, but every year you've seen that the situation has calmed down. So um, having that kind of massive presence at the toll gate already shows that our system is not doing what it's supposed to do. And why is that? If you have that massive turnout at the toll gate of police um, security, if we have half of that within the country and within the state itself, Nigeria will be a better place in terms of security. And um, I see them, you know, it's almost like every year to me, how I feel, it's almost like every year they come out in their best outfits. You see them all cleaned up. Um, you know, with the tear gas and everything, you know, showing you that, you know, they are ready for any situation. But where is the humanity in that system in terms of even showing some form of solidarity in remembrance of the people who lost their life? No responsibility has been taken for a whole lot of things, especially even removing the cameras that were there and the inspector uh, general of police who, you know, found some exhibits at the at the at the toll gate there were a lot of situations that we can actually pick upon and tear into pieces in terms of how things the last the events of how things were done that whole week or weekend because that protest was for like almost two weeks and then on that day ended and a lot there had been videos even after that um after 2020 there have been a lot of videos. I know that some people have done documentaries. Like there was a documentary that came out about three families, um, three families that were affected and how they were affected. And it was majorly centered on police brutality. Mm. There were three families and there were some, there was a CP that was named as the killer cop and there were a couple of other people that were named. Until today, we haven't heard anything about that in terms of how that case was just pushed to the side like it didn't matter. And it matters a lot because there were human lives lost that day. And would I say every evidence, irrespective of what is being portrayed on social media and on the news in terms of denial or accepting blame, no one is truly coming out to mm. actually accept blame for anything <laughs> and no one is getting punished. So, so I, I, I like what you said about the police um, having about 20 bullion vans, having a, a more tanks, you know, by the toll gate. And I'll say to you for free, it's because of the fear of what might happen again. Um, so it's almost like, Kai, we allow these people. So this time around, let's not even give them any chance at all to do any such thing. That's why you would have such a huge number of police presence at the toll gate. But if you say that the NSAS protest, the question for today is how are the youths faring after three years? I would say that the general elections this year in February, you know, kind of like hinted on how the young people are faring or how they want to, I mean, they want to move on for, from this. Um, a lot of young people came out in mass. There was a huge uh, registration of um, new voters this year. People stood out to make sure that the votes were counted mm -hmm. and all of those things just because of the aftermath of the 2020 events from October the 20th, right? So um, I don't know how this will play out, but I really, I really am grateful for the fact that the likes of Files, Mr. Macaroni, the EIE people, and all of those people are actually keeping the conversations at the front burner. Because you see, what I have heard several times is that politicians are, what's the word now? They understand the language of the young people. They believe that, oh, don't worry, just give them big brother, give them this, they will forget, right? But all of those things, I, I don't see it happening with this um, toll um, gate, especially the Lekki toll um, incident that happened, right? So um, I'm, really, I'm really praying that we do not lose um, steam, we do not lose focus. Because again, 
the main essence for this protest in the first place was for a better, uh, what's it called, policing structure, security personnel who wanted a better life, you know, not just for ourselves, but also for citizens. I'll tell you a story. My son was in the car with his father, right? And his hair was decently cut because, again, they tell you that, oh, profiling, after whatever, whatever. But his hair was decently cut. It was with his father. But because they were driving the farm car, which is the Corolla, you know, so they assumed that he was in an Uber, right? And they stopped, they, they stopped them and asked him like, to come down. My, my son was not asking why. That said, you know, so they were just like questioning him. And, and I said, I'm with my father. They didn't want to, be, but they didn't want to believe that he was with his father. It was almost like they were trying to harass him, you know, until the father now intervened and all of that. So literally, right, every young person, like you're a young man, you know, automatically in the eye of or most young people in the eye of the police they are all into internet fraud they are into drugs and all of those things so it's it's they have every right to like harass them but guess what this is not to say that the young people themselves right are not guilty of some of these things do you understand? Because, again, we must be truthful to ourselves that a lot of people took advantage of the NSAS um, protest that was ongoing to push for their own agendas, right? You, you cannot deny the fact that there's a high um, level of internet fraud going on in the country, a lot of fraud going on in the country, amongst, especially amongst young, young people or people into drugs and all of that. Those things are real. So if you say, okay, do the police have a basis to continue to do some kind of profiling on this, of these young people? They have a solid base. And I've heard several times where police will stop people, they will take them somewhere and they will give them a millionaire and they continue. If I don't have a millionaire at NJ, there's no how you want to shake me that I'll give you that one millionaire that I worked hard for. Do you understand? The fact that they keep on getting away with these settlements means that some of these guys that they actually arrest are guilty. But it is the it is the idea of not categorizing everybody into that box that I have a problem with. But we'll take a break, right? When we come back from that break, we'll continue the conversation. And hopefully, we'll take your comments. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right. Thanks. If you just tuned in we're discussing the hashtag memorial and the state of nigerian youth after three years now please let's hear what you have to say remember you can join the conversation send us an sms or whatsapp to zero eight one eight zero three four six six three all right so um before before we went on a break right i was just explaining how it's important that we understand and realize that the police also have a bit of basis you understand in some of these things that they do um, a lot of young people have taken to crime. They've taken to going into what's it called, all sorts of uh, fraudulent activity. Some of them are guising under the, uh, what's it called, the umbrella of uh, content creators. Some of them are, they are under the umbrella of, oh, I am, a, a, what's it called, I am selling cloth and bag and shoes, but the real job behind those things or, sh or cars or real estate, but the real job behind some of these things are actually... Um, fraudulent, um, like um, what's it called, internet fraud, fraud, or you know whatever it is you want to call it, maybe drugs or something. Like literally, yes, there's a lot of crime going on underneath some of these things, and you know, so no, I don't even have an issue with that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was just going to say that if we say that we want to check on young people three years after, right? The same issues that called or that warranted. I wouldn't say it won't because people will come for me, but it's not like anybody deserves to be ill-treated, right? I mean, I watched a documentary. Let me give a good example. Um, a documentary about Bitcoin, how a young boy in the university harvested or he stole. This was when Bitcoin just came out. So literally, he was part of the people that were writing the codes and all of that. This guy, clean um, theft. He did about 50,000 Bitcoin, which was worth about $3 billion. So this guy was just cleaning out. He was busy living a life. Li so, like, fraud happens everywhere. Yeah. But the thing is, with this guy, by the time they finally arrested him, I think he was given, like, two years jail term or something. So, for me, 
even if these guys or these young people are into crime, as a police officer, if you've done your proper investigation and you find them guilty, why don't we have a healthy, what's it called, uh, a healthy judicial system that just convicts these people, put them in jail, and probably like after how many years or after serving their term, they come out, right? But why do we have to get to that point where a police officer would probably drag a steering with you, jump in front of your car, stop you at night, bundle you into a bus, take you to some station and all of that? And I will take you back to what we had said earlier. It's the fact that we don't have data. We do not know who we... Do you understand? Like, we don't have... People don't have an identity in this country. Literally, I can be here and, you know, nobody can identify where I am, where, where I stay, whatever I do. You know, so most of these people, especially law enforcement agencies, they feel that the only way to catch a criminal is to really catch the criminal, right? They, they, they don't have... They can't think of any other creative way to arrest or to detain or to whatever. They have to go through that brutal uh, way of bundling them inside their car, driving them somewhere, or yeah, or got set to loss and all. Because all of those things, if we had a system that was functional, the police would never do those kind of things. Because even their own identity is at risk because people can actually identify them and report them. And you look at the state of our police vehicles, for instance. I, I saw some vehicles in, um, in Dubai. When I saw police vehicle, I said, God, now police, they drive Ferrari and Lambo <laughs> Lamborghini. Yeah, because if they need to catch criminals, they need to get their And some cars. of those criminals are, are inside those Bugatti and all of that, so they have to match um, uh, engine power for engine power. But our own police cars, if you see them, the ones that are even clean are the ones that were donated, you know, then the ones that are not clean, you know, you, you see them dilapidated, you know, permanently parked on the road, you see all the engines and everything, all the intestines, you know, showing. So, I mean, like, literally, the way our police um, repre represents some level of poverty or something, it's also, it's also a cause for concern. And I think, again, if you bring it back to the NSAS process, those were also part of the fight that a lot of young people were fighting, even on the behalf of the police. Yeah. So they don't have to do all this kind of, you know, um, would I call it illegal stuff to be able to extort money from their victims. So I don't know who we are going to blame for this. Mm. Eh? So there's, the, the, you've listed some of the things and from coming from the part of the citizens and the individuals, yes, the police is there. The, you said that the only way that they can actually tackle this is by attacking the crime. That's fine. Uh, profiling is taught. You, you learn how to profile people, right? So there is, um, there's a training that goes with it. So if you have been trained properly, even as an individual, um, I can profile someone to an extent. So I'm expecting that someone who has been through confirmed training should have a little bit of expertise and professionalism when they do, uh, when they, mm -hmm. you know, when they execute, you know, their job functions. So you can't tell me that stopping every young boy who has dreads is a profile. I don't think that's very intelligent coming from the police. You can't tell me that anybody in a Toyota Corolla or in a Mercedes, yes, we know that they drive, there are series of cars that they drive. And you can't tell me that anyone that is in a Mercedes will be stopped and harassed because they're in a Mercedes. Mm. There should be some level of professionalism and intelligence added to this. And that's the reason why there's a training that comes with it. Mm. You are made to ask certain questions. And when those questions are not answered or evidence is not given, then you can make your speculations and make your assumptions and make your conclusions. But you can't see two young men sitting in a car, maybe just coming back from the gym or on their way to go and buy something to eat. So they're they are obviously in shorts. You, you can't expect them to be in shirt and tie. They are probably in shorts, <laughs> a t-shirt, uncombed hair because they're just going to go and look for something to eat. And then you stop them. They tell you, okay, I'm a computer scientist, I'm a this, I'm an IT person. And then you say they look like criminals. How? Mm. How do you come to such a realization if you are supposed to be a professional? There are certain things that you will ask. Searching of people's phone is totally out of bounds. So where did we get to that point? And why do we have police, in, with the fact that we even have police in the system who are requesting for money and letting the thieves go? Are those not the real criminals? What do, what do we have to say about that? 
If your job is to catch criminals and you are conniving with the criminals to let them go and attacking and harassing innocent citizens who are either going to work or going about their businesses, how is that any police work? Hmm. How is that profiling in any way? Hmm. So something has to be done. It's either that the training exercise is done again or certain rules are given. You see, my issue is that the police does not even respect the police system. Because even the police system and the police commissioner have come out to say certain things about the way that the police should handle certain situations. But is that ahead to? The answer is no, and nobody gets punished. We just once in a while meet people, maybe until they are caught on camera and caught with live videos before the police does anything. Mm. And then they come on live video and disarm a police man. Is that supposed to make us feel safer? Mm. The fact that the people who are supposed to protect us are on the, daily, on the road harassing people and even extorting people and carrying out crime on their own, something needs to be done. This is three years later. You ask me for the a heartbeat of everyone, nobody is happy because nothing has changed. The system hasn't changed. The individuals haven't changed. Recently, I saw it in the... In, on social media, that there was a man that was being accused of a crime. And a few days later, or a few weeks later, he was um, badged as a policeman. In Kano. In Kano. <laughs> so how does that happen? So how do you tell me that I can live my life to the safety of the police when the police, fact, when criminals are in the police the, system? The caption on that particular post, and I'm actually looking forward to maybe that is a fake news. I want it to has to be because, because if the something caption like that happens, on that particular post said that he was a very, very notorious criminal that they have been searching for. Then all of a sudden, this same notorious criminal. So I get the part that again, again, let's go back to even international communities, right? You know, there's a way crime. So part of what this guy that I was talking about, you know, his, his um, agreement was that if he told the guys, the investigators and the FBI, that if he told them how he was able to hack the system and all of that, they have to give him a lighter sense. I mean, criminals always do these negotiations where they go back and forth. So we don't know the state for this particular uh, notorious criminal that was caught in Canada. All of a sudden now he's now a police um, police person. I don't know. Uwa what state? No, no. No, but Uwa what state can get you to that point where you put him in the same system to guard the same people and protect the same people who are accusing him of crime? So let me tell you something. And you think he will Angel, not go after them? NJ, what, what, what you're failing to realize is that in Nigeria right now, you see this thing where they talk criminal. They're not the right time for help, but a lot of people have been compromised. And when I say that a lot of people have been compromised, I mean it from every sector. So check any sector right now. There are a lot of people that are compromised. Now, the one way you know, now you know. Do you understand? Because these things, they're not the right hand for face. A lot of people have been compromised. You have it. So you really, right now, the way I deal with people, I deal with you with suspicion, then you prove me, you prove me <laughs> otherwise. That's how it is. Because again, you can't even trust so doctors. You can't even trust that the doctor knows is, the is, 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 I mean, knows the job. I mean, go to the schools. You can't even trust the teachers that they know their job. I'm saying to you that this criminality or whatever it is, it cuts across every sector. Do you understand? The only thing is that the, the police, there's a spotlight on them because, you know, of, of course, they, because of their own style of job and what they have to do, standing on the roads and interacting with citizens. But when you talk, when you talk about, um, what's it called, the compromise in the system, it cuts across. There's really no system that is, you can say, okay, these people... When they give you their word is their bond, you know. So I mean, there's a lot happening, right? There's a lot happening. The only thing that I'm worried now is where we are as young people, because just even after the, this 2023 general elections, a lot of young people were really, really disheartened, um, uh, and a lot of them relocated. A lot of them left the country. A lot of them are still leaving the country. I mean, if you go to the passport office across all um, immigration centers, you will see a, a, a massive number of young people trying to get an international passport just to leave this country. So that is actually worrisome for me because if we continue to have this level of people wanting to leave the country because, again, they do not trust the system, how do we even move away from some of these problems, right? How do we move from it? Yes, I get it that the toll since the massacre, they've not been able, they've not reopened it, and hopefully they do not re reopen it. But it's beyond that, right? 
I would like when I see that a government is looking and saying, you know what, guys, these are, these are, these are concrete steps that have been taken. You understand? I would like to see our police in better state. I would like to see our police a lot more, uh, what's it called, responsible, you know, being presented as respectable people in our society. I mean, the other day we took a story about how uh, military personnel, no, not security personnel, would begin to receive, I mean, their families would begin to receive some pension. And I said that was, a, that was a very welcomed idea. Because if I know that I'll be taken care of, I'll do my job without looking back. I think, again, it is so... Nigeria's problem, right, it's not just... So NSAS is a symptom, right? Mm -hmm. It is not NSAS in itself. The, the entire system... Right, we need to go back to the root and like strip it one after the other. Because you see, once we solve one problem, it can automatically solve multiple problems that are existing. Because some of these things are just symptoms that we see. Right? I like that the idea of keeping the the answers um, conversations mm -hmm. alive every th three um, every year. But beyond that, right? Beyond that, I want to speak to the young people people organizing some of these memorials and all of those things. We've done this thing. It doesn't work, right? We've done, it's like insanity, they say, is repeating the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. These are the things that we've done. You've taken walks, you've protested, you've gone to sit at the toll gate, you've done candlelight work and all of those things. It's not working. My, I don't know what other solution that I feel that might be of better impact, you know, if there are suggestions, I don't want to suggest anything because I don't want anybody to think that, oh, maybe I'm trying to, but really, we need to, we need to understand that certain really tough decisions must be taken if we want to change the status quo of our country. If not, it's just going to be business as usual. What would you think? Do you have any solution? <laughs> <laughs> a, a solution for who? I don't know. Like literally, okay. So now they've take, they've done the stage work, Abi, whatever at the at the so toll the, gate the and all of that. Behind, Does it change anything? So the idea behind, in my opinion, the idea behind the work, like you said, one is a memorial. And if it's something that is done every year to keep the conversation, yeah, and conversation alive, I think is very welcomed, and I think it's something, and, and I think it's very nice to see that the energy is being encouraged, even no matter how small the groups are becoming but it's very very important to keep that conversation going because it's very easy for us as nigerians to just let things lie because we get tired of fighting we don't even have enough fighting energy do you understand so when we do when we take when we take that massive leap and nothing happens we kind of just it kind of discourages and disarms a lot of people so i think it's very very important for us to keep the conversation going every year because that one thing that we did, that 2020, started a big revolution in the minds of people. And I think change is very, very important to stand in the mind. Mm. When there's a constant reminder that there's a need for change, then this year there might be 20. Next year might be the year that there will be a multitude. Mm. But it's very, very important for us to keep that conversation okay. going because it brings to light our problems. If we do not talk about our problems, who will? Mm. We go through this on a daily and it's continuing every day. I get harassed by the police every day. I leave, where I live now, they are at the corner every day. Mm. I literally had to make the decision not to give out anything as long as i have my papers correct and i have my driver's license if you want to keep me for three uh, five minutes ten minutes i'll stay with you but it's just we just have to make certain difficult situations and one of it is get the right documents make sure you have these things when they request so that because not having the right documents and not having also the right gives them room also I give said. them room to push you mm. and harass you but if you have the right thing i just sit down there and wait for them to turn it out when they go to the when they now ask you anything about your phone my dad there's nothing when they say you should open your phone i will never that. be put in that situation by god's grace mm. because really you there would have to be some information given for that to happen mm. did you Where see the movie in, the black book um, the one that Richard Mufedamijo acted yes, I have and, seen and his it. son was killed. You yes, know, I have seen it. Because, again, it was still profiling. Like, literally... But that was even literally a setup. Mm. And that thing, because of the fact that 
the wrong profiling. It wasn't profile. So I wouldn't call that situation profiling. It was. They had profiled him that, okay, he had dread. You mean they profiled so, him to take the form? Because yeah. Because they knew exactly what was happening. Of course not. They profiled him because they, they saw his, that he, he, would, he, he can fit he the can situation. Fit. You know that any dead man or woman that you hand a gun on a dead body, that person will look like a criminal. Yeah. I hope you know that. I get you. On that note, I think we've run out of time. Oh. See us talking, we forgot <laughs> that the time was going. But thank you, Angie. I think we had a great conversation. I like your, your school of thought. Keep the conversation alive. But really, I'm just really hoping that we can find a lasting solution. Maybe keeping the conversation would be, you know, part of what will give the solution. I'm hoping and praying that truly our country, we have a great country. We just need to have better leaders. That's all. All right, we'll see you. Um, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles. It's at Wade Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. It says, I don't speak for hashtag NSAS protest on what they do and what they are going to do, but all I know is that they are not giving up. I am so proud of them uh, for that. And this was from Aisha Yusefo. We'll see you guys on Monday at 8 p.m. live as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Have a beautiful weekend. Bye. <laughs>